the, what happens later, which is religious toleration, emerges much later. In reaction to this, people say, I don't want my king telling me how to worship. That's for me to decide what church I go to, how I worship, and so on. But that was one of the outcomes, and it, it led this system in which all of the whole planet was carved up into little pieces, and each piece has a state that governs it. Right? Now, the reason why it's important, although Malaysia and China and other places in the world had their own political traditions, had their own trajectory, these were all replaced by an invention that came out of Europe, which is the Westphalian state system. It's the state you've got, like it or not. You have a Westphalian style state here in Malaysia and in China. China had its own incredible political tradition, but the state they have is one designed along European lines, um, not the particularly Chinese lines. So given that, it's important for understanding this. And I want to suggest that this notion of the modern state is not inevitable. It's not the only way for people to live together. There are other options, and we should open our minds to other ways of organizing human affairs. But this notion, in particular, and here this is very important in the Malaysian context, the nation state, again, emerging out of Europe, <coughs> Uh, really out of the French Revolution, the idea of la grande nation, the big nation, that each state was later associated, not only, this is much later than the Peace of Westphalia, with a sovereign, but with a nation. At the time of the French Revolution, only about 50% of the population of the Kingdom of France spoke French. Right? Now, what is it? 98%. Because the state imposed the French nation on the Breton, on the Occitanians, on the, uh, all the little nations, the Provençal, and so on, who spoke other languages and had their own traditions. Similarly, with the German nation state and other nation states, the English nation state attempted to exterminate the Welsh language and Cornish. Cornish died. Welsh is still spoken. The Welsh people are very proud. They speak one of the strangest languages on the planet. <laughs> it's unbelievable to hear people speaking Welsh. Uh, but they're very proud of it because they resisted this nation state mentality. So and this has come out in the discussions about Malaysia. Is Malaysia a Malay nation state? Or is it a state that has room and space for equal citizenship for a multitude of different national identities? That's a, a question that the people are struggling with in Malaysia. <coughs> it is a question that was put to the French Revolution, effectively. Um, what recourse does an individual have if he or she disagrees with the spontaneous order of its creed? I'm sorry. Are there any examples? There are many examples. One of the nice points about a, a voluntary society with spontaneous orders is if you don't like it, you can form a different one, an alternative tradition. So think about one of the one example of spontaneous order would be coordination of music. We have musical scales. We have uh, ways of writing musical notes, right? These are all kinds of order that emerges spontaneously. If you're writing musical notes, the Greeks had a different notational system than the Chinese did. But now, every place in the world, you see musical sheets with those bars and the little notes all over them. That's not the only way to write music. There are a lot of ways to write music. And people are now experimenting with new ways of doing that. And you think about all the new kinds of musical forms, the internet, MP3 files. Spontaneous orders are not fixed. And the free society allows you to exit from them and start a different one. It might be more compatible with your interests, your desires. If you look about the um, uh, Islamic finance around the world, the state is going crazy because of Islamic finance. They hate it. But it turns out that Pakistanis can transfer huge amounts of money from Southern California to Pakistan and no government ever knows about it. They have their own system of money transfers. And it drives the tax collectors crazy. They don't like it. But Islamic finance is an alternative way of transferring money that's quite efficient, works very well for people, 
and you can disappear from the state system and get into that system if you want to. And a free society allows that. Contemporary states don't like it because they want to control things. They want to control how you live, what you do with your money, where you go, and so on. And I'll mention, by the way, this is a, I'll talk about this later. I'm deeply ashamed that I'm a U.S. passport holder. When you go to the United States, it shames me because they fingerprint you and photograph you like you're a criminal. To me, this is just, I'm so ashamed that that happens. A free society, in my opinion, that's not compatible with the free society. But to return to this, free societies allow people to form multiple overlapping spontaneous orders. You can be a member of one and another. You don't have to have your identity defined by one. A free society is more fluid, it changes, it emerges, it ch creates new institutions to solve the problems that people have. So, uh, Bia and I have some problem, we might create a new system of dealing with that. I'll give you another simple example. Credit institutions, the credit card, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, we take these for granted, we don't even think about it. It used to be the only way you could travel is if you had a lot of cash with you very dangerous. Right? Now, I can go to a country where I cannot even speak the language. I can walk into a building to talk to complete strangers and I give them a piece of plastic. You know what they give me? The keys to a $50,000 car. They trust me. Why? Because Visa tells them he's okay. He pays his bills and he never has robbed anyone. <laughs> so they check it, they say, yes sir, they check it, look at it, okay, <laughs> thank you sir, here's the keys to a $50,000 car. This network was emerged spontaneously, no one designed it, and it just grew as, as connections among banks. There's no Visa company or Master Charge company. It's a, a series of like treaties and agreements between thousands of banks to honor each other's payments and to share information that says, Tom pays his bills. <laughs> and if I don't pay my bills, they say, psst, he doesn't pay his bills. <laughs> and you know what happens? I don't get any more credit. And if I steal something, like I, I don't bring back the, the $50,000 car, they say, he doesn't bring back the car. <laughs> and next time I go and I say I want the keys to a car, they say, we're so sorry, sir. No car. <laughs> but some people don't like that. They say everyone should get a car whenever they ask for it. I think that's <laughs> the fact is, it makes it possible for me to get a car in a completely foreign place where I don't know anybody. But it, it, it is a little signal that says he's a trustworthy person. There are other ways to do that also. Relig relig religious clothes. For instance, the Quakers were very famous of being very pious and honest. If you do business with a Quaker and he cheats you, the other Quakers will come to him and say, shame, shame. <laughs> or Mormons in the United States. Mormons generally are very honest people. Why? But if you do business with a Mormon, normally you can expect honest trading. The reason is, if a Mormon cheats you, you'll go to the Mormon bishop and say, he cheated me. And the bishop would, would come and say, Son, you're in big trouble now. <laughs> right? They have their own network because they want to create an honest, trustworthy society. Uh, but if you don't want to be a Mormon, it's okay. You don't have to be a Mormon. You can get Visa or MasterCard. <laughs> <laughs> and accomplish some of the same thing. The rule of law comes from the society. This is an interesting point. And so does the states. So we have society means all of us. Right? Rule of law is a principle that governs us. And also the state governs us. It's not magical. The state is not made up of magicians. Judges are not magicians. Lawyers are not magicians. So uh, isn't it men or society that are actually governing men and society? This is a very, there's a whole tradition of political science that argues this. Here's why I think it's mistaken. The reason is, 